Hi everyone, I'm Dana. And if you guys are new to the channel, welcome to Inverter Always. If you guys are not new, of course, welcome back. In today's video, I would like to discuss a few very common error codes that pop up when you are doing a Daikin VRV startup, especially on commercial projects. If you guys are techs out there in the field, you're doing a commercial three-phase VRV heat recovery system, you have a branch box, maybe multiple branch boxes, lots of indoor units, etc. These three error codes are going to at some point happen to you. So when that does happen, you guys watch this video and I will walk you through how to resolve those issues. If you enjoy today's video, you guys, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already and you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. Before we jump in real quick, though, just a quick shout out to the channel members. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate your continued support as we build this channel bigger. You guys are what makes this channel keep churning. So thank you again for all of your guys' support. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now you guys, I'm gonna start you off with an easy one and that is error code U1. U1 will pop up 30% eh, of the time because it is a reverse phase. So when you are getting ready to do the fire off, you power up the condensers and on the display of the outdoor unit, if you have a VRV4 or later generation system, it'll actually tell you on screen U1. Now it will give you a subcode as well. It will flash between U1-04 or U1-06 or U1-08. And we'll talk about those subcodes in just a second, but a U1 is a reverse or open phase. So it's line voltage related. Get with the electrician, make sure they check the power that there's no open legs. And as long as there are no open legs, that means it's a reverse phase. All you have to do is take two legs, flip flop them, you're good to go. Reboot power to the system, make sure you don't have any more U1s. Now those subcodes tell you specifically which module, which outdoor unit in a paired system or a twinned system is the reversed phase. So for example, if I have two outdoor units, they're piped and wired together, they are twinned to make a larger system, and I get a U1-04, that means the master outdoor unit is the reversed phase. Now sometimes what happens is you fix that, and then you reboot the system, and then it gives you a U1-06. Well, now that means that your slave module is the module that is reversed phase. So it's not a big deal. It's quick and easy fix most of the time, but that is what a U1 is. And by the way, if you get a U1-08, that means you have a three module system and it's the last module, slave two. Sometimes you'll have all three of them reverse phase. Again, pretty quick, easy fix. Now the next code we're gonna talk about is a UA53. And this is very common. A UA53 means that when you powered up the outdoor unit and it went through the initialization process, that 15 minute boot up process, there was a mismatch between indoor units and branch box ports that were assigned or to be used. This happens a lot. And usually this is because either an indoor unit or branch box did not get powered, did not get line voltage applied to it or it means that the dip switches on the branch boxes did not get set correctly. And this happens all the time. This happens so commonly that I thought, you know what, we really need to do a video on this. So how do you resolve the UA53? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to shut off the condensers because once you fix the problem, you are then gonna have to reboot the condensers anyway. So just power those off now. First thing you need to do is go back and walk the job and look at all the indoor unit thermostats to make sure they have a display. If the thermostat does not have a display, it does not have power at the indoor unit or there's a wiring issue. Either one of those issues needs to be resolved before you can fully initialize the system. So make sure that all of your indoor units have power and of course are wired correctly. Then go to the branch boxes and make sure they have power. For some reason, and I don't know why, Branch boxes don't get line voltage ran to them quite commonly. And so just make sure you're communicating this to the electrician so that they know they need to run line voltage to the branch boxes. Verify there is power at the branch boxes and make sure that the dip switches are set properly. Now in this video particularly, I'm not gonna go through and explain here's how you set all the dip switches. I'm actually gonna do a separate video on this. If you've followed the channel, I'll put a card in the corner right now so you can reference it. But I briefly discussed what the dip switches do. 
uh, on a previous video. So you can refer to that and then I will do a dedicated video here soon that you can check out that just talks about the dip switches. But for now, we're really just focused on the error code UA53. So when you get that, make sure you go double check those dip switches. Once you've confirmed I have power to all of my indoor equipment, my branch boxes, and all of my dip switches are set correctly, now I can go ahead and power up the outdoor units again. But, and this is a very important but, when you power up the outdoor units, you need to tell the outdoor units to reinitialize, go out and re-address the equipment. Daikin VRV systems will automatically address the indoor units that it sees during the initialization process, during that 15 minute boot up process. Well, if you previously booted it up and it saw, I don't know, 20 indoor units, but you actually had 21 installed, so you had a UA53 because the BS ports didn't match the number of indoor units that it actually was wired to, now you've corrected that. Anytime you are adding or removing equipment indoor unit count from the outdoor addressing, you have to reset it. So as soon as you power up the outdoor unit, press and hold the return button for 20 seconds on VRV4 systems and later. So VRV4, VRVX, VRV Emerion systems, the ones that have a display only have three buttons, press and hold the return button for 20 seconds as soon as you power it up and then let go and then wait for the initialization process to complete. As long as you've corrected the issue and you've done the reset properly, when you go back in to verify the communication, you should get the proper number of indoor units and hopefully no more UA53s. Now, if you have an older VRV system, uh, like the VRV3s where you had a lot more buttons, when you power up those outdoor units, you need to press and hold the reset button for 20 seconds to tell those systems to go ahead and reinitialize, readdress all of the equipment. So hopefully you guys can now successfully resolve a UA53. It is most of the time dip switch related, but I always stress, make sure you guys are verifying that everything also has power because you could easily miss an entire box and that's not good. We don't want that. Now, before we get into the last error code, you guys, it's very common that people will ask, Dana, how do you know what all these error codes are? Well, for starters, I deal with them on a regular basis and that's how I've just come to learn about them through experience. But sometimes there's an error code that pops up and I don't know what it is or I don't know how to fix it. Where on earth do I go to resolve that problem? And that is the service manual. I'll tell people all the time, I'm just reading through the service manual and helping you guys with a particular problem. So how do you guys get access to the service manuals and the flowcharts and the troubleshooting trees that I use or that anybody else uses on a regular basis to resolve these problems? And I have good news for you guys. There is an app that Daikin built for North America called Daikin Tech Hub. And it has product literature. So if you guys just need submittals, you can get submittals from it. If you guys need installation and operation manuals, you can get those too. Service manuals, engineering manuals, you name it, including a whole section for error codes. You simply hit the error code tab, type in the error code, and it gives you a whole list of all the different error codes with all the different subcodes for all the different systems out there, including VRV, ductless, Altherma, you name it, it's got the error code in there, even unitary equipment. So it's a very, very packed, filled with information type of app that is great for the North American market. But don't worry if you guys are not in the North American market, there are plenty of similar apps out there. The European market has a app called Daikin Service. And I'll go ahead and I'll throw a couple pictures up here on the screen so you guys can see each of those that I'm talking about now. But I highly, highly, highly encourage you guys, if you're technicians out there, you need to have one of these apps. If you guys are in the European market, grab that Daikin service app. In fact, we used it for many, many years in the North American market before we got Daikin Tech Hub. If you guys are in the North American market, you definitely want Daikin Tech Hub. You do not have to be a user or subscribe or sign up for anything. You can simply use it as a guest and get 99.9% .9 of all the information in there. It is a fantastic app and I highly encourage you guys to use it. It is not sponsored in today's video. I just use it on a regular basis. And it is extremely helpful, especially if I'm mobile and I don't have an actual copy of the service manual to open. Bam, I can just open up that app, go to the section I need. Here's the flow chart. Follow that, fix the problem, move on to the next one. So you guys, if you have not already got it, 
get the Daikin Tech Hub or the Daikin Service Apps. And of course, there are many, many others around the world. These are just the two main ones that I typically use on a regular basis. So you've fixed the U1 and you've corrected the UA53 and now we're crossing our fingers and we're just hoping, please, 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 can this system just fire up? I don't want any more issues. Please just go to the blank screen, see all the units, let us get through test and be on our way. Well, there is one more error code that tends to pop up fairly often and usually this one will pop up as soon as you start test operation and that is a U4, but not just any U4. You see, there are two U4s that will come up quite commonly, and we're gonna talk about one of them today. The U4-01 subcode is usually a communication error, and that typically happens when your system is operating, you're past the test, you're just normal daily operation, and somebody kills power to an indoor unit, or cuts the communication wire on accident or on purpose. And now all of a sudden that unit drops off the communication chain, the outdoor unit goes, whoa, I can't see all of my children. I'm gonna freak out, where is that kid at? And it shuts completely down and gives you a U401. That's a calm error, either wiring related or power related, easy to diagnose, but it's not part of today's video. We wanna talk about the U4-03. Because the U4-03 will happen generally right when you start up the equipment. If you're going through the test operation, you start the test. Yes, we're into the test. Boom, it fails. U4-03. What is a U4-03? Well, U4-03, when it pops up on the outdoor unit, means that you have an indoor unit error code. But because it's on a particular indoor unit and it's not a system-wide code, the outdoor unit can't really tell you exactly what that code is. So it says, hey, well, we got an indoor unit problem. Don't know what it is. You need to go check it out. So what do you do? You go inside the space and you start turning on the thermostats. If you've got nav controllers, that's the more common commercial thermostats. We'll just roll with that for now. You turn on the nav. The on-off light starts blinking and it says, hey, you have a U9. Uh-oh, what's a U9? Well, U9 is very easy. It just means that there is indeed an error, but it's not on that unit. It means go check a different thermostat. So you turn that thermostat back off. You go to the next one, turn it on, U9. Okay, we're making progress. We're checking off the indoor units as we go. That one, again, means there's an error in that system, but it's not on that unit. So turn off that thermostat, go to the next one, U9. Turn that thermostat off, go to the next one, turn it on, U9 eventually you're going to get to an indoor unit that has a different error code. And usually it's an error code like, a, I think it's an A6. An A6 is, if it's if I got the right one, is it A6? Let me double check. Not an A6. An E6? No, it's an A9. Yeah, A9. On my Daikin Tech Hub app. Good thing you guys have that app. A9 is the common one. And an A9 means that you have an unplugged, electronic expansion valve on one of your indoor units. If you have a FXTQ air handler in the North American market, sometimes as contractors are installing the air handler, they have to unplug and take stuff out to get the cabinet up and then they reinstall all the guts and the expansion valve does not always get properly plugged back in. Sometimes on the wall mounts, it comes unplugged. I mean, it's just, it happens. So A9 is a really common one. Your nav controller says A9. That usually means you have an unplugged expansion valve. But regardless, whatever that error code is, that is the unit that is an alarm. So resolve it, fix the alarm, then turn that stat back off. Go through all of them just in case you have multiple indoor units that are in alarm. That way we're not repeating this entire process later. That just adds more time to the startup. We want to just clear all of those alarms. And now we can rinse and repeat, reboot the condenser, recount our indoors, restart the test. And then hopefully this time we pass the test. Now, if you guys are still with me, thank you for starters. But I have a little bonus error code for you, and it's UF. Every now and then you'll get a UF during the test operation. If you have isolation valves installed anywhere in the system, you need to go double check. But wait, Dana, I already did that. You need to go triple check. No, I went through and made sure all the valves were all open. Okay, you need to go quadruple check because UF means that during the test operation, while the outdoor unit was running, 
the indoor unit did not see any heat exchange through the coil. Well, the only way that that happens is if you have the refrigerant restricted. So if your isolation valves are in fact open, you then have a restriction somewhere else, like on your line set. 99% of the time, there is an isolation valve that did not get checked, and it was still closed on the branch box. Sometimes, depending on where you're at, we will install isolation valves on the branch box ports. That way we can relocate units later much easier without taking the entire system offline. It's a conversation for another day. But in the app, it says your stop valves are closed. So obviously make sure the stop valves are open. That's kind of like step number one before you power anything up. But just wanted to let you guys know as a little bonus for sticking around this entire video. Thank you. That UF also means you need to go quintuple check five check, whatever, you need to go check your isolation valves because even though you think you may have opened them all, maybe you didn't personally go and check. So go check, make sure all the isolation valves are open. Now you guys, big, big asterisk, exclamation mark, push pause if you found a closed isolation valve because you need to be careful here. We do not want any non-condensables, any contaminants getting into our system. So when you were checking the isolation valves, did you have both a liquid and a gas isolation valve on that same port closed? If you did, that entire line set from the port of the box to the ender unit is now isolated off the system. So there is a chance when you were doing your pressure testing, pulling your evacuation down, you did not include that line set. And if that is a possibility, you need to make sure that you completely evacuate that line set and make sure there are no non-condensables in that line set before you open up the isolation valves. Usually what will happen is there's one isolation valve either on the liquid side or the gas side somewhere in the middle of the box where the valve was hard to get to because it was really close to the ceiling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that was the one that got missed. It wasn't both the liquid and the gas. But in the event if that happens to you, just push pause, and that way you're not accidentally causing a huge problem and then having to reclaim all the refrigerant out of the entire system just to make sure you don't have any non-condensables. Now, of course, I said I wasn't going to go into detail about this UF, but here I am going into detail about this UF. I have a very important story to share with you guys that will hopefully help this information sink in as to why it's so important to go through and do these checks yourself. We did a startup on a job a couple years back, and we got a UF. And so I told the technician, go check the branch box isolation valves. And he did. And he comes back, and he says, okay, we're good to go. They're all open. I said, okay, great. Let's go ahead and shut down, reboot. Now, keep in mind, that is a 15-minute process. Let's restart the test. And remember, the test can take up to an hour. Test starts, starts going through all of its checks. Halfway through, fails on another UF. And I'm like, hey, we still have a closed isolation valve. And so he goes back through and checks again, comes back and says, all right, now we're good. I found one that was closed. And I'm like, wait a minute, you just came back the last time and said that they were all open. So how did you find another one that was closed? You did not check all of the valves. So, okay, fine. Let's shut it down, reboot. Let's restart the test. And you guys, I'm not kidding here. We failed the test again on a UF three times. So eventually the lead tech went and checked them all himself to make sure that they were all in fact opened because this was adding a ton of time into the day trying to get this system through the test diagnostic. So hopefully that helps that information sink in as to why it's so important just to make sure we go through all of these checks. Well, there you have it, you guys, three very common error codes, plus a few extras trickled in throughout the video. At some point or another, these are going to pop up for you. When they do, they're very common. I hope this information is helpful for you guys to get everything resolved on your end. So thank you very much for watching. You guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And of course, if you haven't already and you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. You guys, thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you all have an awesome day.